All right, guys, so now that we have a full CRUD application with Laravel, we're going to now work on authentication and access control. So if we look in our database, we have a user's table because Laravel ships with this migration. If we go to database migrations and it creates the user's table. If you if now if you wanted to add extra fields here, you could have added them here before and then ran the migration or you can even add them now and run it. Um, but this is fine for what we, we're going to do name email password id so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to enable authentication okay we already have the users table so to enable authentication we can just run a, an artisan command so let's go ahead and do let's go to our terminal here and all we have to do is php artisan make off okay this one command is going to basically enable all of the, the the user model, all the controllers, the auth controllers here. And we're going to have a login system that's going to just work right off the bat, which is just friggin awesome. So let's run that. Now this here, um, when you create authentication, it creates a layout for you. And the layout is very similar to what we have uh, now, which is just a, a nav bar. Um, it uses bootstrap and it creates a form for your registration and all that. Well, actually those are views, but the layout it extends from. So if we go to uh, resources views, it's going to replace this app.blade.php file. And I'm actually going to let it. Okay. But before I do that, I'm just going to copy everything that's in that file and just go to a new file and paste it in just so I, I have that. Okay, because there is some stuff that we're going to have to add back and stuff. All right, now let's close that up and let's say yes. So now if we go and let's close this and, and look at our app.blade file and it added a bunch of stuff for us and some of this stuff we can actually use. So for instance, it added this CSRF token, which we would have had to add later anyways for security reasons. It gives us a nav bar. And if we look down here, it has all kinds of logic. So on the right side of the nav bar, it's going to have a login and register link. All right. And it's going to check to see if we're guests, if we're not logged in, it'll display that else. Then it's going to display a drop down with our username uh, and also a logout function. So let's go ahead and save it and go back. Reload. And this is the nav bar that it included. It has a login and register link and these pages are going to work just by enabling the, the authentication that we did. We should be able to register and all that. But let's fix the nav bar. There's some issues here. We don't have our pages, our links here anymore. Um, you also see we have some margin under it. So if we go to our layout file, the new one app.blade.php, the nav bar is right in the layout. And we didn't do that. We had it inside of an include. So what I'm going to do is copy or cut the whole nav bar out. And we're going to go to our nav bar include. And let's just go under all this and paste it in. Okay. And then we'll take what we need from our old one, which is this UL here with all the pages. So we'll copy that and we're going to put it right above this UL that has the nav bar right. OK, and then we're also going to remove the static uh, nav bar static top. Now, if you want to go back to the black nav bar over the white one, you can change this to nav bar inverse. Actually, let, yeah, let's do that. Uh, or you can keep it white with nav bar default. OK, it's up to you. And let's see what else we need here. Let's save that and make sure uh, it looks OK. We'll just need to go back to our layout and include it. Uh, and also we should have a container class here. All right. And then remember, we also had the messages include. So we've got to make sure we put that back. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's try that. 
All right, so, so we have two nav bars now because I forgot to remove it from here. So let's just actually one more thing. We need the create post link. So let's just we'll cut that out and then we'll just delete the rest of this. So the, the create post, I actually only want that to show if we're logged in. So let's go right. Uh, let's see. I'll just go right here, I guess. No, not here. Not in the drop down. You know what? Let's just leave it out for now. So let's save. And now we have our nav bar that actually makes sense. So we have all of our pages and we have our login and register links. So let's go ahead and try registering. Email address. So I'll just do Brad at Gmail password. And register. Okay, so what it does by default is it registers us. It signs it, it logs us in and it brings us to slash home. And if we look over here in our controllers, it gives us a home controller. Now, personally, I don't like the name home. I would rather this be dashboard because that that tells us that it's actually a back end, you know, instead of just home. I think of the index page as our home that the uh, the page index. So what I want to do is change all of the instances of home to dashboard. You don't have to do this, but it's just something that I, I like to do. So first of all, let's change it to dashboard controller. Okay, and then down here where it says index, uh, we're going to show a, a view called dashboard, not home. Save that. And actually, we need to rename it. So let's go over here and change home controller to dashboard controller. Now things are going to break because there's some other places we need to change things as well. So in the auth controllers, if we go to forgot password, actually that's the only one we don't have to change. But if we go to login controller, we're going to change home slash home to slash dashboard so that it brings us to the right place after we log in. Same with the register controller. We'll change this. Save that and also the reset password controller. Okay, so change all those. Now we need to change the links to um, to slash home or the routes. I'm sorry. So we'll go down to our routes file, which is um, where is it? Routes web dot PHP. And notice that it automatically puts in this auth routes. It did that when we ran the artisan command and it also created a route to the home. Okay, but we want to change this to dashboard and change this to dashboard controller and I'm just going to get rid of the name here. All right, so let's save and now I believe everything should work. I'm going to log out. Okay, we'll go and log in. Uh, let's see something's wrong. Oh, the view. We didn't change the view name. So we have to go down here and change home dot blade to dashboard dot blade. There we go. So now we have our dashboard. Now what I want to do is make it so that when we create a post, actually, let's put a link here to create a post. So we'll go to dashboard.blade and let's go right into the body here. And let's see, what do I want to do here? We're going to have an area for our posts. So let's just put a heading. We'll say your blog posts. We're not going to do that just yet, but I just want to put it there and then we'll put a link to slash post slash create and give it a class of BTN BTN primary. And then let's have that just say create post. 
Okay, let's check that out. All right, good. Now, when we create a post, I want to insert the user ID as a field. Now, if we go to our post table, we don't have that here. Okay, we have title body, but we don't have any area for user ID. So what we'll do is create a migration that's going to add that to this table. So let's go to our, um, our command line or terminal. And we're going to do PHP artisan and we want to do make migration and you want to give this a very descriptive name. So we'll say add underscore <clears throat> user ID to posts. We'll just do add user ID to posts. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that created migration. Now, if we go over to database migrations, you'll see add user ID to post. So we're going to open that up. And right now, if we if we do um, PHP artisan migrate, it's going to run this, but nothing's going to happen because there's nothing in the up or down function. So what we want to do is first go to the up function and we're going to say schema table. Uh, we're going to do schema table and then the name of the table we want to work with, which is posts. All right. And then it's going to take a second parameter, which will be a closure, which will be a function. And that's going to take in the parameter of table. And then we can put, we can add whatever we want here. So let's say table. We want this to be an integer. And we want to call it user underscore ID. All right, so when we run the migration, it's going to add this to this table. Now, if we go down, if we want to roll, roll it back, then we just want to delete that column. We want to delete uh, user ID. So let's copy this. And then instead of doing table integer user ID, we're going to do table drop column user ID. All right, and we'll save that. And now we'll go and run it. So let's go to our terminal and we're going to do PHP artisan migrate. Okay, now let's go look at our database. Let's reload this. And now you'll see that our posts have a user ID column. Okay, so we didn't have to go into PHP my admin or the SQL shell and, and do it ourselves. We can just run a migration. And if we wanted to undo that, we could just do PHP artisan um, PHP artisan migrate rollback. Now for right now, I'm just going to manually change these to the ID of one just so they belong to someone. All right. And if we go to our users table, we have our user here. Okay. With the ID of one. Now, when we insert or when we create a post, let's go over to our post controller. What's this? We can close that up now. So let's go to post controller and go to the uh, store. Okay. Because that's where it's going to get submitted to the form. And we just want to put right here. We want to add post user underscore ID. Now we're not setting that to a request because it's not coming from the form. But now that we have authentication enabled, we can access, we can use auth user and then we can get any of the user fields, but we want the ID. Okay, so this will get the currently logged in user and put it into the user ID and then save it. So let's save that. And then we want to do the same thing with the update. Actually, no, the update we don't because it's never going to change. The user won't change. So let's just try this out now. So we'll go back to. Uh, uh, oh, we don't have a dashboard link. That's we need to do that. So in our nav bar, which is right here, and I guess we'll put it we'll put it in the drop down. So just like we have a log out here. Let's see. Let's uh, actually let's grab the li. Um, no, we don't need all that. Let's just type it in. So we'll say li. And then this is going to be a link to slash. I think it's just dashboard. All right. 
Let's try that. All right. So now if we create a post, let's see, where are we at? We have one, two, three. So let's create four. Whoa, where's the editor? Wait a second. What happened in the editor? Oh, the layout. We got rid of it. Shoot. So we got to go back to our app dot layout or app dot blade. I'm sorry. And let's see, we, we just need to put that JavaScript back. So let's go back to the documentation for Laravel dash CK editor. And we just need this. Okay, put that right down here and save. And that should give us the editor back. Good. So post four. Submit. And now if we go and look in our database and go to our post table, you can see that post four got ID user ID one. Okay. So if we were logged in with someone with the user ID of two, then two would have got put there. So that way we can track what posts belong to what user. All right. And I'm going to show you how to actually add a relationship in the model as well. Okay. So we're going to get into that in the next video.